Okay, everyone. So now we are learning the array. To understand the array, first of all, we are taking the example. Let us suppose that we are going to declare a variable. So we are saying int a. So that means one variable will be declared. So here we are having is the memory block, which is into the memory. We assume that its name is a. And let's say its address is 301. Now afterward, if I am assigning the value of a, so I'm saying a is equal to let's say seven. So that means a is initialized with the value that is seven. Now afterward, I want to store one more value. Let's say I am saying a is equal to n. So what will happen? In that case, the existing value of a will be replaced and that will be 10. That means at a time in a variable, I can store only one value. So let us suppose that I want to store the five values. What will happen? In that case, I will be needing the five variables. So let's say A, then afterward B, C, D, E. So these numbers of variables are required. So we have to declare all these variables. These variables will be having some memory. Let's say here we are saying this is B, which is having 401. Then we are having is C, let's say 507. Then D, which is having the memory, let's say 609. Then further E, let's say it is having 702. So these are the addresses of this memory. Now afterward, we can provide their value also. So let's say B, I want some value, let's say one. So B will be initialized with one. C will be having, let's say two. So C will be having the value two. Then D, let's say is having the value, which is nine. So here D will be having the value nine. Then E, let's say the value is 12. So that 12 value will be stored into the E. So that means these are the five variables I require for storing the five values. If I has to store 100 values or 1000 values, do I need to take 1000 variables? No. So there is a provision provided by the C programming that is array. So with the help of array, we can take multiple values together. Or we can say that array store the homogeneous elements. Homogeneous means same type of elements. So here we can see that we are having all the integer type of element. The first one is the int a, then int b, int c, int d, int e. So these are the five variables of integer type which will take the integer elements. In that case, what we can do? We can simply say that int. So what that means, it is the integer data type. Then afterward, we are providing a single name that is a. Now inside that, we can provide how many elements we want. Let's say we want the five elements. So we'll simply provide five. So that means this is the declaration of array. By saying single line, we can take the array with the five blocks and where we can store the integer type because here we have declared the integer. So it is having the homogeneous elements means of same type. So array can be of load, it can be of integer, but all elements will be of same category. Either all integer or all float or all character. Next point about the array is that it store element into the successive memory location. So here if we are defining an array int a5, that means one array is declared. Then there are five blocks of memory which are reserved. Now these are continuous memory or we can say that it is the contiguous memory or the successive memory location. Contiguous memory means sequence wise. So here let us suppose that the first block of A we are having is the address that is 300. We know that there are various data types and these data types take some space in the memory. So that means how much byte they consume. The first data type we are having is the cap, which is the character. So for the character, we need one byte. Then we are having is the integer that is int, int take two bytes. Then afterward, we are having is the float, float takes four byte. Then afterward, we are having is the long, long also take four byte. And then we are having is double, double take eight byte. Depending upon the compiler, if you are using some advanced compiler, then maybe these bytes change. Maybe integer can consume four bytes. So that depend upon your compiler. But as per the basic compiler, they are taking these much of byte. So we are assuming that here we are having is the integer array. And we are assuming integer array take the 
two bytes. So that means here we are using the int A5. And the first one is 300. So successive memory location or the contiguous memory location or the sequential memory location says that 300 plus 2 means the next block address will be 302. Then again plus 2, that will be 304. Then again plus 2, that will be 306. Again plus 2, that will be 308. So that means all the blocks will be in sequence. That is called contiguous memory. So here array have contiguous memory which is into the sequence. Array is called composite data structure. Composite means it can store more than one element. We know that whenever we are saying that int, then afterward we are writing A5. So that portion is called the declaration. Then afterward we can provide the values to the array. Let's say we are saying equal to, so curly bracket start, we are saying let's say 10, 20, 30, 40 and 50 because there are 5 elements so I am providing the 5 elements here. So this is called the initialization of array. Whenever we are providing the value to array that is called initialization. So here at the consecutive location these values will be stored. So here first block has 10, then 20, 30, 40 and 50. So all these elements will be stored here. Array elements can be accessed randomly by using the indices. As we know that array is on the consecutive memory location means into the sequence. That's why we start the array with 0 and continuous 1, 2, 3, 4. So these 0, 1, 2, 3 and 4 are the index. By the help of index we can access the array randomly. Let us suppose that I want to print the second index element. So let us suppose the element is 30. I want to print it. So what I will do? Here is the name of array that is A and what is the index? Index is 2. So simply we are going to write statement which is printf means printing on the screen then double quote start percentage D for the integer value comma here we are providing A2. Now A is the array name 2 is the index. So by this the output will be 30 means the answer will be 30. This is how we can access the random element from the array. So here we have learned about the array that array store homogeneous element, the elements which are of same data type. So here we can see that array A is declared of integer means all the elements 10, 20, 30, 40, 50 they will be of integer. If you are going to store just like some double let's say 10.1 that is wrong. If you are storing a character let's say A that is wrong. So for that you should be having the float array or the character array. So all the elements will be of same type. Second one it store elements into the successive memory allocation. Successive memory is also called contiguous memory or continuous memory or the sequential memory. Here we can see that we are using the integer. An integer we are assuming is having the 2 byte. So every element will be of 2 byte. So 10 will be of 2 byte, 20, 30. So every element will contain 2 bytes. So if the starting address 300 which is also called the base address. So the first address where the array start that is called the base address. Now afterward if we are taking the integer and the integer take 2 bytes. So every element will take the 2 byte. So consecutively 300 plus 2 that is 302, 304, 306, 308. So this will happen for the integer 2 bytes will be added. So these are the consecutive memory. So consecutive memory or sequential memory will be allocated in terms of array. So if you are allocating an array, make sure your memory has the sequential memory available. If in the sequence those blocks are not available to the memory, then array cannot be allocated because it needs the sequence of memory. Then afterward we are having the composite data structure because array contain multiple elements which is more than one that's what is called composite. We can see that here 10, 20, 30, 40, 50 these are the multiple elements more than one that's what is called the composite data structure. Next point is that elements can be accessed randomly 
by using the index so array is having the index here index start with the zero we can see that if the array a is having five that means its range will be from zero to four the range is zero to four this signify that index will start from zero then one two three and four so these are the index if you want to access any of the elements let's say you want to access the 50 here then you should know that the name of array is a and index is 4 so simply by saying a4 you can access its value so the value we know that is 50 so this is how we have learned the basic things of array now we are learning the array terminology now we are learning the array terminology in which we are having is the size base range type index and word so first of all we are learning what is the size so here whenever we are declaring the array here inside that we are providing its size so 5 is the size that means array can contain the 5 elements so here 5 blocks of memory will be reserved that means maximum 5 elements can come here so we can see that here 300 302 4 6 and 8 in the consecutive memory five blocks are reserved so this is called size of array that means maximum five elements can come then afterward we are having is the type means which type of array is there what your array can store what is that type so here we know that all the elements just like 10 20 30 40 and 50 these are of integer why because the type of array we have declared is the integer so here int is the type that means it is the data type of array which type of element it can store so type can be integer float character depending upon your declaration then the next one is the base base or the base address whenever you are declaring the array then array start with the first address let's say the first address is 300 then afterward addresses are keep on adding so 302 4 6 and 8 they are keep on adding with the 2 because here we are using the integer so the first block address where the first element is stored that is called the base so it is also called the base address so somebody ask you what is the base or the base address of array this is the first address where array start that is 300 then afterward we are having is the range range signify that means from where our index will start we know that here we are having the size is 5 so from 0 array will start until 4 it will go so that is called the range so the range of this array is 0 to 4 now afterward we are having is the index all the elements of array can be accessed using the index so range define that their indexes so 0 1 2 3 and 4 these are the index so index start with the 0 and go till 4 so these all are the indexes so 0 1 2 3 4 are the index or also called indices and the next one we are having is the word word define that how much space is required for a element one word is equal to one byte so every element here require how much space we know that the elements are of integer type and integer take two bytes i'm assuming it so here in that case our each element need two byte or two word so here every element contain the space that is of two byte or two word so based upon this byte or word we define the memory so the memory we know that starting with 300 then 302 why the gap is of 2 because here integer need 2 byte or 2 word if you are assuming that you are taking a float which take 4 byte then afterward next address will be 304 then afterward 308 and so on so the next consecutive memory will be allocated depending upon the word or the byte so these are the array terminology now we are learning the array operations there are various operations which can be applied on array 
just like we are having insertion, deletion, searching, sorting and merging. Whenever we are having an array and if I want to add one more element, this is called insertion. So here we can insert the element into array, means we can add one more element. Let's say we are having five elements, I want to add on one element, so there will be six elements. Then afterward we are having is the deletion. Deletion means we want to delete some element. Let's say there are five elements in the array, I want to delete some one. So that is called deletion. Searching. If I want to search element, let's say we are having five elements, out of that I want to search some specific element. Let's say I am saying where is the 30 out of five elements. So that is called searching. The next one is sorting. We can sort the array elements, means into ascending order or the descending order. Let's say we are having five elements into some different order. We want to arrange into the ascending or the descending order. So that is called sorting. Then the last one is the merging. We can merge the array. That means let us suppose we are having two arrays. One of five elements, second of three elements. So we can combine them in one and that will be of eight elements. So that is called merging. So these are the array operations which are insertion, deletion, searching, merging and sorting. Now we are discussing the next topic which is types of array. So we have three types of array. The first one is the 1D array. Second one is the 2D array and third one is the 3D array. In the full form they are called one dimension, two dimension and the three dimension array. 3D array is also called the multi dimension array. So first of all we are talking about the one dimension or 1D array. We know that whenever we are going to declare an array and we are saying let's say int then afterward we are saying a and we are providing let's say 3 that means the size of array is 3 this is the one dimension array. So here in the memory there will be three blocks that will be reserved and they will be having the name of array that is a and they can be having some address in the sequential order and we are assuming that their index value start from 0 and going till 2 so 0 1 and 2 so this is the index values. So this is the one dimension array which is into the continuous just like a single 1D array. So there we are having is the straight line. Then afterward we are having is the two dimension array. Let us suppose we are saying int that is the integer. Then afterward we are writing a which is the name of array. Then afterward 2 then afterward 3. So there are two brackets available here that's why they are called the two dimension array. So here first bracket signify row that means here we are having two rows so we are representing the row with the index value 0 and 1. So these are the rows. Then afterward we are having second bracket which signify column that means there are three columns. So they start with the index value 0. So 0, 1 and 2. So these are the index values. So here this is how we are having is the two dimension array. This is just like the excel sheet or a table. So this is called two dimension or 2D array. Then afterward we are having is the three dimension array, 3D array or the multi dimension array. So let us suppose that here we are providing three brackets. We are saying int a. Then afterward let's say we are saying two. Then afterward three. Then afterward again two. So this is how this is the three dimension array because here we are having is the three brackets. So here the first bracket stands for the row. So there are two rows. We know that we are representing the row with the R. So here 0 and 1 these are the two rows. Just like in the example of 2D array we was having the two rows. So here 0 represent the first row and 1 represent the second row. Similarly here we are having is the first row and second row. So 0 and 1 are the index values. Then the second one we are having is the column. So here 3 means 3 columns. So here we are representing C for the column. So here we know that there is 0, 1 and 2. So there are 3 columns. Just like we are having the 2D array in which we have represented 3 columns. So here 0 is the one column. Then 1 is the another column and 2 is the another column. Similarly here we are having is the 0 as the first column, 1 as the second and 2 as the 
third column. In the 3D array, we are having third block, which we are representing that, let's say it is the Z. So this is the third axis, which is having the value that is 2. So I am representing that it is having the value that is 2. So that means 0 and 1. So here, these two will be there to the Z axis. Means the 2D will be repeating two times. So here, one time we are repeating with the value which is 0. Then again, second time we are repeating the 2D. So here, this is how we are having the Z axis. Or we can say that this is the third axis. The important thing to note here is that in the one dimension, we are having only one bracket and only one dimension. Means only in one way, there will be the array. It can be into the column or the row. So here it will be only single array, 1D array. So the 1D array can be single like this. That means it is a horizontal array or it can be a vertical array. So this is a single array which will be having only three values. In this case we are having let's say A. So its index value is 0, 1 and 2. And we can represent the array like this also which is 0, 1 and 2. So both way it is possible but yeah it will be having only one value. So this is the 1D array. Then afterward we are having is the 2D array where we are having is the two blocks. That means two axes. So here row and column we are representing. You can also take X and Y axis if you want. So this is the table or it can be the Excel file or it can be the 2D array. All are the same thing. Then after what we are having is the three dimension array which is also called multi dimension array. In the multi dimension array we are having the three blocks. So one, two and three. This can be x, y and z axis or you can take as just like row column or z axis totally up to you. It will be having three blocks that means it is working into the three dimension. Above that practically it is not possible. You can say that 4D, 5D, 6D Everything is the multi-dimension array, but that is not practically possible. So that's why only 1D and 2D array are majorly possible into the programming. So that is all about the array.